Hi guys, welcome to Creative Making. My name's Pete, and I haven't posted anything for absolutely blooming years. Yes, uh, I apologise for that. Unfortunately, life does have its way of getting in the way. Without going into too many details, a lot's happened in the last couple of years. I no longer work in the film industry, my choice. I no longer live in London, my choice. And unfortunately, my old dad has had to leave his house and he's currently living in a care home in Yorkshire. Nobody's choice, poor old fella. So yeah, as you can imagine, things have been a little bit more important, I suppose, than putting content up. But uh, nevertheless, I am back with hopefully what is to be the first of a three or four part series of videos where I'm going to take you through the process of creating a two part resin mold for prosthetic makeup effects. So yeah, in this first episode, we're going to look at the basics. We're going to do a snap mold. If you've ever heard that term, this will show you what that is. We're going to get everything ready for episode two, where we're going to be making molds and casting things out of resin. So stick around. I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. Okay, so for this video, we're going to need a life cast. This is one of me that I've had for years. Uh, this is actually made in fiberglass. Uh, you might start off with a plaster one, but it doesn't really matter whether it's fiberglass or plaster. First thing we need to do with this, obviously, is give it a good old clean. All this clay's been on there for, God knows, 15 years or so. So uh, it's all pretty much dug in, so we need to crack on and get that cleaned off. So there it is, all nice and clean. And uh, we're just gonna talk a little bit about what I'm gonna do on this guy. So I'm gonna do a prosthetic on this side of my face, over the eye, down onto the cheek. I don't normally do this, but I'm sort of marking this out with a marker pen so you guys can see where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go slightly up onto the nose. A little, this is bigger than I want it to be but that's the area, the minimum area we want to mould. In fact, we want to go further on than that. So in order to mould this, it's a pretty basic process. So we need two cups, ideally if you've got them with markings on, and we're going to measure out two equal parts of silicone. Now the silicone I'm using here is Dragon Skin 20 NV. It's a 20 short A platinum silicon. It's a fairly quick curing silicone and it's got a decent shortish pot life. So we're dispensing that out into equal parts. And we're gonna give those guys a good old mix. Now at this point, if you wanted, you could put some pigment in there, which helps you see whether it's fully mixed. I like to live life on the edge though and not bother with a pigment. So we'll give that a thorough mix. We need to grab the old life cast. So because this is fiberglass, I don't really need to use any mold release on this. The silicon won't stick. If you're gonna use a plaster life cast, I would recommend sealing the plaster because even though silicon won't stick to it, plaster's incredibly porous, so it might grip onto it. So seal that with something like Vaseline or Sonite wax, and you won't have any problems. So to apply this, I'm gonna be pretty liberal with this silicon, and I'm gonna paint it into all the nooks and crannies. I'm not particularly interested in capturing any of the surface texture of my skin all i want really is the topographical information the bumps and the lumps and the shapes and the forms 
So you can see there I'm just pouring silicon all over. It will dribble down onto the table, but I'm not too worried about that because I just leave it to cure and once it's cured I can peel the whole thing off. This is my favourite part of the process, this. It always looks nice and smooth and shiny. So there's everything covered and we're going to leave that to cure for a bit. So you can see it's not 100% cured, it's very tacky. I'm going to take this opportunity to put the next layer on. So for this layer, I'm going to pour out equal parts of silicon again, same silicon. You'll see the label actually says a different name. You don't need to worry about that. It's Dragon Skin 20 NV. Now, I don't recommend pouring both parts into the same cup just in case you pour way more of one than the other. Ideally, pour them into two separate cups so you can get the same amount. Into that, I'm going to put some 5X. So 5X is a silicon thickener. And we're going to pop a little bit in there. And we want this silicon to be kind of like the consistency of um, room temperature peanut butter, maybe. <laughs> Anyway, so we don't want it to, to slump off the stick. So this is a good mixture for me because it's not slumping or slowly oozing off the life cast. It's staying where it's put. So you can see there I've put that on with a brush. I'm making sure I'm going into all the nooks and crannies here. I've actually pigmented this off camera just with a bit of white pigment so I can see where I've been. So once I've got it covered and I'm happy that it's all covered, I'm gonna spritz it with some isopropyl alcohol and the brush that I use to paint it around, I'm gonna spritz that with alcohol so it doesn't stick to the silicone and I'm gonna uh, smooth this all out just so it's neat and tidy. Yeah, smooth it all out so it's nice and neat and tidy. If you don't smooth it out, then you'll find you'll have issues trying to get it back into the support shell that we're gonna make in a moment. Okay, so leave that for a little while. In fact, I went to have my dinner, left it to fully cure. There it is, nice and cured as is that on the table, so that's all good. And I'm just gonna do a final layer of unthickened silicone. These layers are actually referred to as the splash coat. And the reason I do this is kind of aesthetic reasons, so it looks nice and smooth, but also it goes back to what I was mentioning earlier on about the silicone fitting back into its support shell. If it's nice and smooth, there's no lumps and bumps that you're gonna have a battle with when you try and get this back into the support shell. So a little tiny bit of silicon, another brush, and I'm just gonna brush that on. No doubt I will pour it on as well. This looks really messy, and it kind of is, it's quite, kind of good fun. But you can see how smooth and shiny that becomes. Yeah, I thought I would pour it on. We're just gonna leave that to find its own way, level itself. nice and smooth and shiny. Once that's cured, then we can start to clean up. First thing I'm gonna do is just take a scalpel, be careful with these, they're very sharp, obviously designed to cut skin. I'm gonna take a scalpel and I'm just gonna trim around and I'm just gonna pick up all that silicon off the table. You can see it just pulls up really easily. Once I've got rid of that, it's just easy to manoeuvre. Now I'm gonna go through the thickened part of the silicon. I'm gonna trim all the way around, right down to the life cast. If you are using a plaster life cast, this will cut marks into your plaster, so just take it easy. So I'm just taking my time and trimming all that off. And 
there we go nice and neat so that's our silicon mold essentially before we go any further we need to put a support shell on if we don't the silicon will flop around when you try and fill it and you'll get an inaccurate casting so for that we're going to use plaster bandage so for that we're going to obviously need some water and some uh, gypsona plaster bandage To use this just be careful with this because I see a lot of people will be using this way too wet you can see here what I'm doing is I'm putting it into the water and I'm squeezing the water out if it's too wet it won't set properly it'll always be kind of damp and a little bit soft but if you do it correctly squeeze that excess water out you get a nice creamy plaster and then once this cures up it'll be nice and hard Bear in mind this mould will probably only get used once, so I'm not spending a lot of time on it. So it's cured and it should just pop off nice and easy. It won't stick to the plaster. Oh, and in fact, in this in instance, it peeled the silicon off as well. So the silicon stayed in the jacket, which is really nice. Okay, so that's our snap mold. And uh, what we need to do now is we need to fill this with a casting material. So the casting material we're going to use for this is plaster. For that, I'm using Cristocal R. It's a very strong, hard plaster when it's fully cured. Before I do that, though, I want to make sure that I seal that edge of that plaster bandage. So for that, I'm going to use some of this uh, mold sealing wax. The silicon part's okay, but I just need to go around this edge here and make sure it's sealed. I don't want that plaster to grip to that once I've filled it. This stuff is nice and thick. You can make it softer with a hairdryer. I'm just gonna paint around the edge there on that plaster bandage. Okay, so now that's done, let's mix up some plaster. So a little bit of water. I'm just using cold water from the tap here. And as I say, I'm using Cristocal R. You can use Plaster of Paris for this, but I find Plaster of Paris is way too soft. Cristocal R is just a really nice hard plaster. So you can see as I'm shoveling it in there, by the handful, I'm putting the plaster into the water and I'm kind of wiggling my fingers so I can feel for any lumps in the plaster and I'm creating a little island in the middle of the water. Once I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna let that sit for a few minutes and let the water soak in. Okay, so I've left it for a few minutes and now let's get my gloved hand. Important to wear gloves, your skin will dry out and crack like crazy if you don't. So we'll just give that a good mix and we've got a really nice creamy thick plaster mix. No lumps or anything like that. And I'm literally just dumping that into the mould. Again, no mould release uh, apart from that sealer around the edge. It's going into a silicon mould so we don't really need to release it. So once I've got that in there and I'm happy there's enough, I'm just going to let it sit for a little while and uh, it'll start to thicken up and when it does I'm just going to scoop some more plaster around the edges just to kind of thicken those edges up and make them a bit stronger. I'm also just going to take some of the plaster out from the middle, we don't need it to be solid.
Off camera, I smooth the back out a little bit with a brush and some water. Let's uh, get this open. It opened really easily, uh, just pried it out. And there we go. So that's the plaster cast of my face. Just need to do a little bit of clean up on it around those edges. So that's pretty much it then for this part of the process. Um, it's pretty basic stuff, but it's really important in order to get everything ready for the next stage. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned some bits and bobs. If you've got any questions or comments, please put them below this video and I will get back to you. As I say, in the next video, we're going to be taking this and we're going to be processing the live cast into a uh, resin copy. Thanks very much for joining me, everybody. Please consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit that bell icon. And whatever you do, make sure you like and share this video. Thanks very much, and I shall see you soon. Bye.